Thanks for joining me on another video and on this one I'm doing a CCTV install um, obviously I've got to be a little careful of what I show because it's you know it's uh, sensitive information it's a CCT CCTV install on a domestic property um, so I can't give away location of the property that sort of thing um, but I'll try and show you what I can and what I find and uh, hopefully it's of interest to you. So I'm replacing um, five existing cameras that have been here for a while. They were installed by a company that the customer was not happy with at all. Um, so I'm going to be replacing those five that are already installed and adding another four um, to the system. So it'll be nine cameras in total. Uh, so I'll show you the cameras, show you what I find and yeah, we'll go from there. So let's get into it. Hi, okay, so I'm going to show you one of the cameras I'm replacing. Um, there's five of these. So we've got these ones, which, yeah, seem to be okay, but I think this is the way they've been installed. I hope you can hear me because I'm standing behind the microphone. Did you, can you see that? That's supposed to be a waterproof stuffing gland. Well, there's plenty of movement in there water will run down cable and that's gone straight into there I haven't even opened this this yet but i'm sure there'll be some water damage so yeah not ideal uh yeah right so i'm going to get those all changed and i'm also going to show you what i found upstairs um where the current recorder is and show, show you how we're going to change it all right okay so i'll stick the lights on so what we have here is these are the one, two, three, four, five cables coming from the current cameras. And then they had to basically join them together with Wago connectors and that sort of thing. And there's one, two, three, four, five power units down here. It's a power unit per camera. They're the old style cameras. They're not um, PoE. They're not cameras that run, you know, power over ethernet. So you've got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, it's not ideal, I mean it was functional, um, but what I'm going to do takes up a lot less space and once fitted, you know, for somebody who does it, you know, like a professional, it's a lot easier to install. Um, but we're going to do away with all this and have a PoE switch in here which will power the cameras, I can close this, use, utilize this box, close it up and send one cable across to the recorder which will be sort of behind me where this old recorder will be replaced. And then um, get the cameras changed, get the recorder changed and yeah, we'll have four cameras from, you know, an out an outbuilding being beamed wirelessly from a wireless bridge, which I'll show you a bit later, um, uh, over to this side over or over to this property, into these, into this switch, into the recorder. It's not your average uh, setup. You know, it's a little bit slightly more advanced than your average, you know, a couple of cameras that you just stick on the front of your house. This is using wireless bridges uh, to, to send the recorded image across to another building. Um, but yeah, it's going to it's going to look lovely once it's finished. But yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a vast improvement on this stuff. So. Right onwards. OK, right bit of a spanner in the works it's thunder and lightning so as you can tell I'm having to pull the pin well as you would have just seen yesterday got rained off um, thunder and lightning very very frightening Galileo as they say um, 
yeah, it was not, not good weather for doing this. So I went home early and got some other stuff done, but I'm back here this morning. And so, so far I've got one camera up, I'll show you in a bit. And I'm concentrating on running the cables um, from, you know, from this outbuilding back to where a switch is gonna go. Um, I've got three of the cables run yeah, three of the cables for three of the new cameras. One camera's already attached. Um, I'm just in the middle of putting some conduit on at the moment, so I'm going to get some. Uh, I'll get some video of that now. Uh, right. Okay. So there's one of the cameras. If you can see that. If I could zoom in on this blooming thing, I can't. But yeah. So that is a Hick Vision Dark Fighter camera. The cable comes from that. And pops out here. You see those cables coming out the top of that conduit box there. Um, and yeah, it's three cables. So there's two other cameras around the front as well. So all three cables are coming from here. And they're going to be entering another building through conduit. Sort of along this fence and conduit down, 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 underground, and up the wall and into here into this building here where there's going to be a poe switch which will power the cameras and i'll show you all that as i install it um and we'll be sending so these cameras here will be powered by this poe switch on this building sent via another cable up to a wireless bridge which will send the images wirelessly across to another building where the recorder is so you can have cameras mounted on outbuildings as long as there's power out here somewhere, we can power them, power the cameras and send the data across wirelessly over what's called a wireless bridge over to the recorder. And I guess I'll show you that when I get to it, all right? Okay, all right, so I'll quickly show you a couple of cameras that I've just put up. Um, we've got two, two different types of camera here, got right next to each other. Um, one's a motorized zoom camera so that can sort of zoom into uh, a local area like a gate or you know a gateway or an entrance to your driveway and one's a normal camera there we go so there's your normal style camera there and right next to it we've got another one which has got a motorized zoom you can tell by the difference on the lens yeah okay you're right so a little update, um, got all four of these, well no, that's a lie, I got three cameras up uh, on an outbuilding, I've wired up for the fourth, but I'm, that's all, to get to it I've got to get amongst like sort of two foot high grass and sticking nettles and I've got, I got shorts on today. Um, and in my experience this time of year you get this thing called the Blanford fly uh, amongst the grass and that bites you. Your, the rash it can come out the side of your hand um, so I'm not going in there unprotected so I'll, I'll do that part tomorrow put the camera up tomorrow when I've got trousers on and boots um, but it's all wired up I've run all the cables back to here so that's four cables there from the three cameras I've done on one outbuilding that one goes to another camera which I'm going to do tomorrow like I said this is a cable that goes along here all the way through this garage gives you sort of three ports like a three port garage all the way through i would show you it but i don't want to show you too much of the internals it's you know it's it's just sort of private really um and this is where it comes out and this is what's going to be a part one of the wireless bridge you're going to have a bridge here sending the signal that way to the main building where there'll be another bridge receiving the signal and then decode it into the recorder so basically we've got cameras mounted here on outbuildings as long as there's power here to power this stuff i don't need the recorder here i don't need internet connection i don't need anything um it just sends it across um so that's the important part i don't need an internet connection it's just talking to itself via a wi-fi bridge and the only time i need an internet internet connection is at the main house which there is i just don't need it at the outbuilding so yeah really useful stuff um, so here, yeah, so we're going to have this cable, which is that, uh, cable I've just showed you, the bridge. This will go into a, pa uh, into a power injector. A cable will come from that power injector going into a PoE switch, 
which will be connected, all this PoE switch will be connected to these cables, giving power, power over Ethernet, PoE, to all four cameras. But I want to double socket up there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to come off here. This is a, I've already isolated the power here. So I've turned the sockets on, I've tested it, and I'm going to spur off the top here and just knock out single cable up to another galvanized uh, metal clad double socket. I'm going to come off there. So yeah, so a bit of progress. Um, also, I just want to show you as well. This is the conduit. So that's got the cables from the three cameras on this external building. We're coming out there, down through this conduit, all the way along. The customer was happy for me to put it on this fence. It's not going anywhere. Um, there's certain regulations we need to adhere to when attaching conduit running power cables, but this is just data cable. That goes down there. And then underground. Luckily this was really easy to dig up. You've already got your, this will be an earth rod here, and that's the uh, steel wide armour cable coming from the main building. But here it was clear, and then it pops up again, up and up and up and up and up and up, to there. And it comes out where those cables are in this garage. So yeah, I've been quite busy, um, but yeah, still got loads to do. So I'm going to get this socket on now, then get some hardware fitted in here. Plan for tomorrow is get that cable up there, so where I'm not going to, I'm going to get stung. This area will, and oh yeah, and that bridge over there which I showed you, and that will be this area, this part of the job on the new, the new stuff, pretty much done. Then I've got to replace all the cameras on the house and then do a bit of jiggery pokery with another POE switch in his office. But that'll be tomorrow. So for today, for this part of the video, you can see me now. For this part of the video, the, that'll do. Um, I will catch you tomorrow, I guess. Hopefully it's a nice dry day. And thanks for watching so far. If you've been watching it, I hope you enjoyed it. While I'm here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share it and like the video. Feel free to comment. Um, yeah, up to about 200 and something subscribers now. So it's taken along. And I appreciate every single one of you. So yeah, um, I'm going to... I'm going to crack on with this and I'll be back in touch tomorrow. All right. Thanks for watching. Well, good morning. And here we are again, day three. Um, as you saw yesterday, I left those cables coiled up at the end of the video, but I did actually finish doing off the hardware, uh, doing the hardware in that part of the building yesterday before I went. So I'll show you that now. So that was that double socket I was going to come off. So I've spurred off that lot as you can see up there into that double socket and here you have all the hardware so to explain you've got the four cables coming from the four cameras on these outbuildings going into this which is a poe switch this is sending power up those cables powering the cameras this cable comes from here into the power injector this is the power injector for the wireless bridge um, that I showed you, that cable that goes all the way through. Um, this is what sends power to it. But this cable here, the short one, is basically taking the data, the information from these cameras into this, sending it down this cable to the bridge, and the bridge will send it across to the receiving end of the bridge. But yeah, that's how it looks in here. It's quite tidy to be fair. This is a, you know, it's just a garage out building, so it doesn't have to be enclosed or hidden away too well, but not too shabby, I don't think. So yeah, happy days. Right, I've got plenty to do. I'm gonna get that camera up on the other side. Like I said yesterday, um, I got some trousers on. Charles on today, save so me getting stung and bitten and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to get that camera up. I need to take the bridges home because I need to set them, set the software up on them. So I'm not going to get the bridges up on the building today. Um, I've just, yeah, I'm going to take them home to set them up, um, set the software up, save doing it on site, um, and I can use my home internet connection to do it. And you really need a half decent quality laptop. Um, to have on site for doing this stuff which i've just discovered and my laptop was about eight years old and only had about four gig of uh, memory uh ram anyway 
and I need something more powerful. So I've ordered that and I'm picking it up after work tonight. So I'm going to be a busy boy in the office tonight doing all sorts of techie stuff with the with the laptop installing the software that helps you install this stuff, um, installing other bits on it and sorting out these bridges, updating the software and getting them all paired together already. So the bridges will go on tomorrow, but I'm going to get that camera up behind me where where it's all difficult to access, like I said, and start changing the other five cameras on the building as well. And hopefully that should be straightforward, but I'll try and get a video of me changing a camera, um, prepping a data cable so you can see how I do it or the method that's needed to be done. And yeah, I'll try and get some footage of that. All right. So, right, I'm going to finish my coffee and get on with it. Hello there. Right. Okay. I want to show you the cameras um, that I'm using and the mounting bases that goes with them. Hope you can see me all right. Um, I've got the camera sort of balanced on a joist in this sort of garage. And I've got this really attractive tool belt and brace thing to carry all my tools in. And I'll show you why we need all this. So, what we've got here is Hikvision AccuSense Dark Fighter. Um, very good camera, not cheap, it's not the stuff you get from Screwfix or that sort of thing. Um, there's uh, a consumer level Hikvision stuff called High, High Look and this is uh, trade level, professional installation level. Um, not cheap these cameras at all um, but you know if you're doing it for you know for a decent a decent system and you're you know you're doing it for a living you've got to use decent equipment. So yeah I'm sure you're aware of it it's a, it's a Hikvision AccuSense uh, dark, powered by dark fighter camera basically very high very good quality and it's really good at dark in, you know in the dark in the low light okay so these cameras look like this out of the bag so there's your there's your lead your connection there for your rj45 or your ethernet cable rj45 data cable so we connect into that and it's got a protective film on it there we've got there's there's your lens okay the whole thing twists and turns, it's a turret style camera so you can sort of mount them up on a wall or a ceiling and move it around to where you want to be. And so what you've got to do with these, so to actually mount that, you firstly got to get this, there's like a collar, this sort of collar that goes around the camera. We've got to get this off. So in order to do that, I'm going to twiddle that bit off. As you see, that comes off. And that gives you access to screw holes. Alright, now you can see, I don't know if you can see them there, there's one there, there's one there, there's a third one there. So if you imagine this is the wall, you could drill, screw that in. Alright, that cable would have to go either into a box or a waterproof box or through the wall into the loft or something protecting the, the electrical data part of the cable, but that could be mounted to the wall flush. In this instance, we've got to mount these cameras onto special mounting brackets that enclose all that cable for us. So it gives me something to mount to, and it actually encloses that data cable as well, keeping it waterproof and protected. This is all metal stuff, you can't just smash it, you know, it's really highly protected. So, what you've got here is the mounting bracket. So this is going to be sort of mounted on the wall or on the gable end. It's, a, it's like a timber frame building, not a timber frame, it's got like oak beams. So that's going to be mounted. Unknown caller. Sorry, the phone's ringing. Right. Yeah, mount that onto the wall like that. I'll see you through one, two, three, four screws like that. And your cable, your data cable coming from the recorder goes in through there. And comes out in here so that's where you'll make the connection your white the white cable coming out the back of the camera and the data cable all gets done in there and your camera fixes onto that all right in essence that's it you know that's just a waterproof gland um, the actual hole on that is too big for the cable it's designed for um conduit i think but it's, do it up as tight as you can and then put some sealant in there that'll be completely waterproof um but yeah that's it you can actually take this hole out and mount it on the wall and fill this hole with this little plastic grommet 
they're pretty adaptable but they're really good yeah there's like a rubber gasket on there so the camera sits so the data cable coming through that hole there into into sort of this dish this uh, bracket connects to this all sits snug in there and your camera is up on the wall like so everything's enclosed in here and there's your camera a little bit tidier than this i'm just sort of trying to hold it all together for the camera but that's how it all works so yeah um that's basically what we're fitting some decent style cameras you get much cheaper ones made out of plastic which has still got very good lenses and a lot of intelligent features but these ones yeah, because I'm doing a point-to-point -point system or Wi-Fi bridge system, I'm using decent quality stuff because I don't want to mess around. And my suppliers are very good. They've got a good support team. If I've got problems, he's on the phone straight away and he can take me through any problems. But it's a trade-only system. Um, it's not the sort of thing you can bring up as a, a consumer. You have to be a trade customer. Right. Okay, I'm going to get this mounted on the wall. Uh, looks like the battery's going to die on this, so I better change the battery. I would try and get some footage up there on the on the ladder, but it's so tight and hard to do. I'm not really going to be able to do that, but I will get a video of a close up of me installing of the camera installed, so I can show you what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to crack on because phone's ringing and time's ticking. Cheers. Okay, so another part I want to show you is the NVR recorder. So, obviously you've got the cameras up, wire up the cameras, that's one thing. A lot of these cameras you buy today, certainly off Amazon, and, you know, rep, you know they're the rep, Amazon, a uh, reputable, rep, reputable place, but there's, you know, all sorts, you know, different brands, TP-Link, um, really, another cheaper brands I've never even heard of, um, but you just buy the plug it in to the mains, connect it up to your Wi-Fi, and it's and that's it it's working and that's great but it's only run it's you know it's if your wi-fi goes down it's completely useless if you've got poor internet it's completely useless and you've got to pay a subscription to store it in the cloud you know so you don't actually have any physical uh recordings yourself you know so this is a, a recorder so all the cameras are cabled back to this this or another gadget like the power injectors will power the cameras um, there's no separate power units, it's a, it's an IP um, NVR recorder um, with PoE ports, alright? And this is what powers the recorder, so yeah, that's all fine. The ones you get off, um, for, off you know, a consumer level, you'll just basically buy the recorder, plug it in, plug your cameras in and do all that and it should be ready to go. But because this is sort of trade rated stuff, you've got the recorder, but there's no hard drive. Um, you buy the necessary hard drive for the, the needs, you know, the demands of the customer. If you've got one or two basic cameras on a house, you know, um, you don't need a huge amount of hard drive space, you know. The lowest I can get is 500 gigabyte, um, and, you know, that's half a terabyte, and that will record for days and days and days before it starts overwriting itself. Um, it all depends on how many cameras you're reco you're you're recording how long they're recording what uh, resolution they're recording the frame rate you know frame rate per second and the quality of the image that sort of thing that all matters to how much it'll eat up the memory on the hard drive so we've got nine cameras here all pretty high-end stuff uh, very high quality so i needed to get a bigger memory because I want it to last longer so they've got you know a good amount of time to act upon something happening before it starts overwriting so getting something like a 500 gigabyte or a one terabyte 1000 gig um hard drive you know that's sort of the base level um he's gone for a four terabyte that's 4000 gigabyte that's that's big that's 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 big for a cctv system and yes, without getting too technical, there are different compression rates and that sort of thing called H.265. Um, I won't get into that on this video. That's for someone else to go into because I will fall asleep talking about it. But yeah. So I've got a hard drive here um, from Seagate or Seahawk. Seagate. That's here and I've got to actually attach it to the recorder. Um, yeah. I have done a little video on replacing one of these hard drives. If you check out my channel on the list of videos, there is a, a 
just a short video, 10 minute video, where I'm literally replacing a hard drive on one of these recorders. This is a bit more high end, um, but it's quite easy. So you've got, uh, this had eight little screws all the way around the side, tiny little screws like that. I don't know if you can even see that. And this thing lifts out, revealing the internals of the recorder. So yeah, basically this recorder will attach to a couple of cables in here and away we go, all right? I'm not going to video exactly what goes on in this part. There are, like I said, I did it on another video. You can check that out, but I haven't really got time. I've got, I've got a lot, still not got a lot to do, but just wanted to point it out really. It's one of the things, you know, that we've got to do. It's find out from the customer how long they're going to be away on holiday for. So when's this going to be, how long is the house going to be unattended for? So you buy, you get a big enough record to compensate for that. So it's not overwriting on stuff before they've come home from holiday. Okay. So yeah, right, I'm going to get this attached. Um, I've finished changing all the cameras on the um, on the main building, so I'll try and get a shot of that, of, one of what they look like up close. Um, but there won't be much more I can do today because I've got a bit of techie stuff to do at home with the bridges before I can get it up and running. So tomorrow it will be doing lots of connections and getting it all up and running and live, all right? So, right, okay, again, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the final part tomorrow. Good morning and welcome to the final part of this video. It's um, on the final day here. And like I said um, yesterday, I've got all the cameras up and I put the camera bases together. I showed you the cameras and the camera bases and I said I'd basically give you a close up of what they look like, um, what they actually look like mounted on the wall, which I'll do now. Um, and I'll just take you up the ladder now. But yeah, I've been here since half eight and I've just finished getting the wireless access points, the wireless bridges uh, mounted. I had to take them home last night and I pair them up at home. It's a good idea to pair these things up at home. So do the techie stuff first, whether, you know, they're just on your workbench or whatever, rather than fix everything up on the walls, etc. Um, and then try and pair them up. You know, if, if you know that they can talk to each other already, then sticking them up on the wall, put the power through, then they should just come to life and do their job rather than have to clamber up ladders, get them down, reset them, blah, blah, blah. So it can be a real faff. So it really does pay to do it at home first. Um, so yeah, so I've got the one bridge up on the one building, which I'll show you, and the second bridge on the other part of the building, which I'll show you. And all I've left to do now is get inside and put lots of RJ45 connections on, onto the cables for the cameras and the data switches, PoE switches, lots of boring connection work. and. Out of all the different things I do, you know, if you're a regular viewer to this channel, I do TV aerial, satellite, mounting TVs, um, domestic electrician, Wi-Fi improvements, that sort of thing, CCTV. Out of everything I do, putting RJ45 connections on data cables has got to be my least favourite. It's such a fiddly job and it starts to work your fingers after a while and yeah, it's a pain in, pain in the neck. I hate this part, but can't be done. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be time consuming this morning. I'm going to get that up and then get it switched on and hopefully get it all coming to life. And then I'll show you some imagery, some images of the, of the cameras. Uh, I've got to be careful what I show obvious for, you know, privacy reasons. Um, fortunately, you know, this sort of stuff, it rarely, you know, everything's connected. And the first time you turn it on, it rarely occurs that everything's working seamlessly first time you know so there could be a few problems i've got the guy from the suppliers on support ready so if i can need to ring him i can but i've got to do it this morning can't leave it till friday afternoon because that's the worst time to be pulling your air out because something's not working um but all being well it's going to go well it's going it's to start working so yeah right so let me take you uh, up and show you a close-up of the bridges and the ca and one of the cameras mounted okay Right, okay, so here's one of them. This is it. That is a Hikvision wireless bridge. So this data cable enters the building, goes right across inside the building to a PoE injector, which I showed you in the first part of the video. And so that PoE injector sends power up here and the data into this, sending it to the other one of these. 
uh, which I'll show you in a sec. But uh, quite sleek looking thing here's you know you'll have a power light here you'll have a light here indicating that there's data connected and these strength lights here will tell you how strong the signal is between the two bridges yeah so that's that one um, okay and here's the other one and this is on the main building and this receives the signal the signal well the data comes from that cable all the way along going into a poe switch sorry into another poe injector and uh from there into the recorder here's a close-up of one of those cameras so there's there's a camera there and there's the actual camera base looks like that right right gonna get down and get this stuff connected up Right, um, this is the final part of the video, so it's all finished, it's all done. Well, actually I've got to change the name to cover the cameras for the display on the recorder, but technically it's all up and running and recording and done. So I'm going to take you up inside now uh, and show you what's what's happened inside and uh, you know description of what's going on in there. Um, I didn't show get a chance to um, show you me actually preparing the cable unfortunately there are millions of videos on YouTube on how to do that and I just got in the zone and got it done because it is a blooming nightmare uh, doing that so yeah done all that so I'm gonna take you inside and show you the hardware of what's going on up there um, and yeah so I'm gonna take you in there now let's go and have a look okay so I'm inside now um, I'll show you what basically take you through what's been going on so hope you hope you can hear me because obviously I'm stood behind the camera now so got your cables coming in from this is from five cameras on the on the on the main house okay so five cables come down here and they come down into this box and they are fed into this so these five cables are these five with the blue uh, grommets on they're connected to this this uh, injects power over ethernet cable powering the cameras bringing them to life okay and that's plugged in just a normal plug socket down here and another cable comes from here this one on the end here comes from here goes all the way over and connects down here into this little data switch here all right it's just a normal data switch desktop data switch so remember that part all right the the wireless bridge that I attached you know I did the bridges outside so there's one on the barn and another one on the main house the one on the main house is connected to the house via this cable here this cable goes down here into this little white unit there and that is the power injector for the bridge that powers it up the second cable that comes from that comes back out of it along and also in to this data switch so you've got two cables from both CCTV systems. This one's from the cable, the cameras on the house. This cable is from the wireless bridges, which is the cameras on the other part of the building. And this white cable here goes from this switch into the back of the recorder here. And this cable here is a cable coming from the router. Uh, the actual, you know, the customer's internet router. Now we have to connect it to the router to give the cameras what's called IP addresses these are IP cameras and you need to be able to give them all IP addresses so that we can actually configure them you know we've got lots and lots of different cameras we've got nine different cameras essentially only coming into 
one cable, this white one that goes into the recorder. And you give them, you give the cameras IP addresses so you can tell the recorder to go and look at these IP addresses, i.e. look at these cameras, and then display them and record the images. It's quite technical stuff. Um, it's not the sort of stuff you'd attempt yourself, really. Um, normally, the cables that you get from your cameras, say these five cables, would go straight into the back of the recorder in any one of those ports there. Okay, and the ca and the recorder would send power to it, and then the cameras would display on the screen. That's how you do it nine times out of ten. That's what I've been doing for years. This is a lot more advanced. This is the first time I've actually done one of these properly, um, and with assistance from my suppliers, he's been an absolute saint. So a big shout to Mark uh, for helping me out on this. But yeah, it's quality. It's great. It's worked really well. And there you've got the nine cameras up on the. Uh, up on the monitor there. I'm not going to show you too much of that because that's all private stuff but you get the idea. Um, and that's it really. In order to be able to do this, so if you think you've got these nine cameras going into uh, different, well coming in via a wireless bridge, some cameras coming in through a POE, this POE switch here and then they go into a data switch which is connected to the internet now the way you give the cameras IP addresses and you, the way you set them up is you've got to link a laptop to the same network, so connected to the router, and then log into a load of software in order to activate these cameras and get them working. And that's why you've got to have a laptop with you as well. That's brand new, I picked that up yesterday because the one I had before was made of wood basically, it was crap, I uh, just couldn't handle it. So I've got a much faster, much more powerful one. Yeah, it's a bit of a hit to the wallet but it's it's i wouldn't be able to do today without it and i'm going to be using it a lot more so that's worthwhile so yeah it's not really a domestic sort of level stuff what i've done today but it is good it's really quality it's a uh, high quality i should say so yes that's 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 it really um I'm going to change some of the settings on the camera so that they display different names and whatnot and speak with the customer to make sure they're pointing in the right direction. And if I just change one, show you one just for the... It's not really going to matter too much. Bear with me. Anyway, I'll just show you this one here. I don't know if you can see that. That's one of the images just there. See my van in the corner there, look. I'm going to be changing the name, so you can change the name here, it says Cam 1, I can change the name of this to Driveway or something and change the sensitivity of the cameras etc. I've got one of those cameras which is an optical zoom, which zooms right out, so a car, an approaching car, you don't just see the car, you actually see the number plate, it's really, really clear, so like I say, it costs a bit more than your average stuff you pick up from Amazon or Screwfix, but you know, if you want a decent quality system, it's got to be properly fitted and that's why there's a massive price difference so that's it out of breath now um yeah so i hope this video has been useful and slightly more in depth on cctv i've been meaning to do this one for a while but thank you ever so much for watching and yeah if you haven't already subscribe and tell your friends and share the share the channel and yeah i hope you liked it see you on the next one thanks a lot